Breaking, North Korea just issued sinister threat to U.S. Navy, now an emergency Senate meeting is underway. Kim Jong-un is absolutely nuts and I don't think anyone will argue with me on that. It seems that this madman is doing his best to push the entire world into nuclear war. The erratic behavior by the North Korean regime has given those in D.C. reason to be very concerned. Now, those concerns have only been grown after North Korea's latest threat to the U.S. Navy. Yesterday, North Korea further escalated tensions with the United States. Instead of North Korea heeding President Trump's warnings to stand down, Kim Jong-un only upped the ante. According to a Reuters report, North Korea said that they would sink President Trump's armada if they felt threatened. Trump ordered that the USS Carl Vinson carrier strike group sail to the Korean Peninsula in response to the growing tensions. Which seems pretty logical to me considering that Kim Jong-un has been letting off missiles into the Sea of Japan. Our revolutionary forces are combat ready to sink a U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carrier with a single strike, the Rodong Sinmun, the newspaper of the North's ruling Workers' Party, said in a commentary. The paper likened the aircraft carrier to a gross animal and said a strike on it would be an actual example to show our military's force. The commentary was carried on page 3 of the newspaper, after a two-page feature about leader Kim Jong-un inspecting a pig farm. After these threats were discovered President Trump made an unprecedented move. He called the Senate to the White House to be briefed on the tensions. The briefing is so that all 100 members of the Senate are aware of the North Korean situation. According to Fox News, Secretary of State Rex Tirson, Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Joseph Dunford and Director of National Intelligence Dan Coates plan to provide the update to lawmakers. It is rarer for the entire Senate to be invited to such a briefing. Spicer clarified that while the event will take place on the White House campus, it is technically a Senate briefing and Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Archie, is the one who convened it. The briefing, first reported by Reuters, was confirmed after President Trump earlier spoke to the leaders of both China and Japan. Trump spoke by phone with Chinese President Xi Jinping and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Xi told Trump that China strongly opposed North Korea's nuclear weapons program and hoped all parties will exercise restraint and avoid aggravating the situation, according to Chinese broadcaster CCTV. Trump hopes China could increase pressure on its isolated ally instead of using military options or trying to overthrow Kim Jong-un's regime. Trump and Abe agreed to urge North Korea to refrain from provocative actions. Meanwhile, U.S. commercial satellite images indicated increased activity around North Korea's nuclear test site, while Kim has said that the country's preparation for an ICBM launch is in its final stage. South Korea's defense ministry has said the North appears ready to conduct such strategic provocations at any time. South Korean acting Prime Minister Wang Kyo-on has instructed his military to strengthen its immediate response posture in case North Korea does something significant on the April 25th anniversary of its military. North Korea often marks significant dates by displaying military capability. President Trump spoke with President Xi Jinping and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe over the phone. China's president is completely against North Korea's weapons and hopes all parties will exercise restraint and avoid aggravating the situation, according to Chinese broadcaster CCTV. Well, no one is wanting to aggravate the situation but how do you reason with a madman? Kim Jong-un is continually poking the bear and is the only one escalating the tensions. By Kim Jong-un threatening to blow up Trump's armada, what else can we do? This little crap stain is out of control and it proves that President Trump's strong stance is the right way. These sorts of people only respect strength and resolve. If Trump backs off now that will give Kim Jong-un more reason to cause problems with the world. I just hope that in this tense game of chicken, North Korea backs down first. What do you think about North Korea's response to Trump? Let us know in the comments below. Below, breaking. Trump just launched another airstrike, here's the top guy he just blew to smithereens. Muslim terrorists around the globe are finding dealing with the Trump presidency increasingly difficult to handle.
after pretty much getting away with whatever the hell they wanted under the presidency of Barack Hussein Obama. These inbred morons are learning lately that there's a new sheriff in town who won't hesitate to send them straight home to Allah where they belong. Shortly after bombing the absolute percent carrot and out of ISIS several weeks ago, Trump is at it again. But this time, he's taken out someone extremely important to the Taliban, and their entire force is in mourning as news hit over the weekend. A Taliban shadow governor by the name of Gwari Tayyip had been making quite a lot of trouble in the Kunduz province of Afghanistan in recent years, forcing locals there to live underneath his iron fist. The Taliban's top official was responsible for the deaths of many Americans since 2011, where he used his compound to conduct terrorism operations through the large group of insurgents that he commanded. But despite being the Mac Daddy jihadist in the area, his power would still not be able to save his life when badass American troops came calling. In a report just released, the Pentagon confirms that President Trump's latest airstrike devastated Taliban forces, taking out their commander Qari Tayyib in the process. The strike was part of ongoing efforts to deny Taliban freedom of movement in the area, the release added. The strike reportedly targeted a compound Tayyib owned and used for insurgents in the area. Eight additional Taliban fighters were killed in the strike. Qari Tayyip had been on our military's target for quite some time, but under Obama, Tayyip's death never came. The The UK Guardian reveals how these shadow governors act behind the scenes directing activities of Taliban insurgents in each province, where their power in southern Afghanistan is getting out of control. Thanks to Obama and his treasonous antics of empowering our enemies while doing little to stop the advancement of ISIS and the Taliban, now President Trump is having to clean up this horrendous mess. Thank goodness that we finally have a president who is on America's side however, and will not stop until these vermin are eradicated off the face of the planet. The UK Guardian has more details on the airstrike. The Pentagon said on Saturday Qari Tayyib a Taliban shadow governor in Afghanistan who evaded coalition forces for six years, has been killed. In a statement, U.S. forces in Afghanistan said Tayyip was killed in a 17th of April airstrike in the Archie district of Kunduz province. The strike was part of ongoing efforts to deny Taliban freedom of movement in the area, the forces said, adding that the attack targeted a compound Tayyip owned and used for insurgents in the area. Tayyip the military said, had been a target of interest since 2011 and was directly responsible for deaths of U.S. service members in Afghanistan. So-called shadow governors direct Taliban insurgents throughout Afghanistan's 34 provinces. They rule more directly in regions where Kabul lacks control, for instance in southern areas where either the Taliban harvests and sells opium. The Taliban announced the deaths of two other shadow governors earlier this year killed in separate strikes. Eight additional Taliban fighters were killed in the 17th of April strike, the Pentagon said, and no other casualties or damage were associated with this strike. On Friday, more than 100 Afghan soldiers were killed by about 10 Taliban militants who disguised themselves as army personnel and infiltrated a base in a northern province. Suicide attackers had hidden bombs in fake casts and medical equipment, according to one official. Others were armed with automatic rifles. Rifles. China threatens to bomb North Korea if tyrant Kim Jong-un crosses this bottom line. The Chinese military would react with force if Kim Jong-un's nuclear activities adversely affected areas of China bordering the Herman nation, according to an editorial in a government-owned newspaper. The article in the Communist Party-affiliated Global Times stressed the North's nuclear facilities must not put northeastern regions of China in danger. The editorial said, China has a bottom line that it will protect at all costs, that is, the security and stability of northeast China. If the bottom line is touched, China will employ all means available including the military means to strike back. By that time. It is not an issue of discussion whether China acquiesces in the U.S. blows, but the Chinese People's Liberation Army PLA, will launch attacks on North Korean nuclear facilities on its own. The Chinese provinces of Liaoning and Jiling border the tiny nuclear-armed dictatorship. 
the infamous Peng Iren nuclear site is located closer to the Chinese border than it is to the North's capital, Pyongyang. It added, if by any chance nuclear leakage or pollution incidents happen, the damage to Northeast China's environment will be catastrophic and irreversible. While the editorial is not representative of the views of the Chinese government, it comes amid heightened tensions and war fears on the Korean Peninsula. A U.S. Navy strike group was deployed towards the Korean Peninsula soon after the U.S. bombing of a Syrian airbase, which the North Korean government branded reckless and outrageous. And now, a fleet of U.S. allied Japanese vessels is reportedly heading towards North Korean waters as part of a military training exercise. Experts earlier today warned North Korea could unleash a nuclear attack on Hawaii that compares to the power of bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the Second World War. U.S. Pacific Command are worried the island of Oahu is a strategic and symbolic target.